only are we a fringe movement, we are becoming mainstream. Mm -hmm. Mainstream, and, and Lord help us if this movement, uh, it, it has already penetrated national politics mm -hmm. with, with uh, congressional leaders, Senate, House of Representatives. But Lord help us if uh, this movement has a great impact on who mm -hmm. we elect as mm -hmm. president. Mm -hmm. And, and, and that's my greatest fear, is that uh, we will elect a candidate that uh, uh, has really given a platform to the alt-right. Mm -hmm. And if we do that, then of course, uh, the future of race relations in this country uh, is very much in question. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, and the idea that, uh, uh, that this organization advocates is something that I think, as you've indicated, will undercut and undermine almost any kind of uh, diversity, re d diversified relationships exactly. that, that we could have in this and country. And when you talk about racial diversity, and we're a very racially diverse country mm -hmm. with African Americans, whites, and Latino Americans, Asian Americans, uh, the alt-right movement uh, sees that as a problem. Uh, and many of them, as I said earlier, are talking in terms of a white homeland. Mm -hmm. So we have to be careful with the attack on racial and ethnic diversity. Uh, the attack on political diversity are very much, uh, people on the alt-right are very much suspicious of mainstream politics. Mm -hmm. uh, they are also very much uh, suspicious of a society that is diverse in terms of religious mm -hmm. orientation. And we are a society that, you know, we have Christians, we have Muslims, we have Hindus. We have a constitution that, that, that allows us exactly. to have that. And, and, and so anybody who would go against that is basically against the United States Constitution. When you don't stand for religious liberty, yeah. then you're against the Constitution. Yeah, religious liberty, ecclesiastical independence. Mm -hmm. We are a nation that supports those kinds of principles on the basis of our Constitution. So the alt-right opposes that kind of diversity. And, and that's what we have to be very careful about. We, we have to understand that perhaps these elements have already penetrated law enforcement, mm -hmm. have already penetrated uh, the criminal justice system. Mm -hmm. We want to be careful that they don't penetrate the whole of mm -hmm. national politics. Uh -huh. Because if they do, uh, with their anti-black, uh, anti-Jewish, anti-Muslim, anti-feminist, anti-political correctness rhetoric, mm -hmm. if, they, if they achieve prominence on the national political level, then we are in trouble. And, and, and you think that uh, Mr. Trump is in a position to uh, create that kind of trouble for all of us yes. with their support? Is that yes, interestingly saying? enough, the alt-right has embraced him and they mm -hmm. view him as a model mm -hmm. for what they are about. Mm -hmm. uh, David Duke of the Ku Klux Klan, uh, neo-Nazi elements, uh, view Donald Trump as uh, their man. And so we have to take that seriously and try to understand that we are possibly going back. We're mm -hmm. turning back, back the clock. Mm -hmm. We are a nation. We are in 2016. We want to move forward. Mm -hmm. We want to, you know, establish the principle of progress and mm -hmm. And, and some advancement in terms of race relations, uh, in terms of our social, cultural, and political maturity, mm -hmm. but we will never do it if we uh, succumb to what uh, the alt-right is all about. And, and, and they're trying to <coughs> really increase their influence almost in every aspect of American yes, society. Yes, every aspect mm -hmm. of American society. And if they, if they accomplish that at the political level, particularly at the executive branch level. Mm -hmm. of the federal government, then I would say that we have a great cause to be concerned. Yes, and, 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 and it will be a situation that we've not known in America. People might talk about <clears throat> us not making any kind of progress on race relations, then uh, and we're go getting ready for this uh, second commercial break and then we'll get back and mm -hmm. make some more statements. But um, people are, are talking about uh, us not making any progress, but these organizations would be a, a, a tremendous disadvantage. And we'll be back with our yes, yes. following this very, very short commercial break. Mm.
It's on. Talk for me. Hello, I'm here. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's a signal. Hold on here. Talk for me. Hello, I'm here. Uh, okay. Very good. And so, so we've got this, this the last uh, 10 How minutes. How do we deal with this issue? Uh -huh. How do we encounter this uh -huh. problem? Okay. In order to resolve the issue uh -huh. of, okay. of xenophobia and okay. racism, you know. Yeah, well, that's, yeah, that's the thing. And well, I want to talk about little... Hillary Clinton's speech uh -huh. and, and talk about uh, yeah, well, pump what we can as, do. Yeah, pump up as much as you possibly can, mm -hmm. man, because uh, Hillary said country. on yesterday that we have to appeal to every segment of the American whites, blacks, mm -hmm. to con encounter what's actually That's going right. on uh -huh. Uh -huh. and challenge it. Because these folks, America First, is, is, is talking about exactly. America the First as we knew America yeah, First America when, when the first term been, was first out. Yeah, See, America has always been a, a melting pot. That's of right. Uh -huh. You know. Yes, yeah. sir. Thank you, and welcome back to the final segment of the show for today. We're talking to Dr. Lewis Baldwin, and the uh, issue is the alternative right movement and its impact upon American society, especially the political society and the political election of uh, 2016. And so, Dr. Baldwin, let's pick up where we left off, and this mm. is our final segment. I think we've got about nine minutes in this segment, but let's try to uh, give our audience as much information as you can possibly give them concerning what we have to do and how uh, we ought to react to uh, this movement. And yes. make it serious, because yes. this is a serious Yes, I think we have to react on a number of levels. The, this movement, of course, uses, as I said, uh, the websites, social media, to advance its ideals, its values, its ideologies. So what we have to do is to use social media also to counter this kind of movement. We also have to appeal to our political leaders like Hillary Clinton and others, Democratic Party, Republican Party, to really face what's happening. Hillary Clinton made this speech I think back on August 16th about the alt-right, mm -hmm. trying to warn us about what's happening mm -hmm. in terms of its program of anti-immigrationism mm -hmm. and anti-diversity and anti-multiculturalism. Uh, so what we have to do is to take this seriously. I think, I, I don't think we are very serious about our response at this mm -hmm. point about what's going on. Uh, we need to understand that that what is happening with the alt-right is really a normalization of hate speech. Mm -hmm. And not only a normalization of hate speech, but the idea of bringing some intellectual respectability mm -hmm. to hate speech and white supremacist rhetoric. Mm -hmm. And that's not what we are about in this country. Mm -hmm. We are a country uh, that resulted from a melting pot mm -hmm. of races and ethnic groups, mm -hmm. blacks, African people, uh, Asian people, uh, Latinos, uh, European peoples, and we need to understand that that's what we are about. That's who we are. Mm -hmm. and, and, and if we understand that, I think we will counter any movement or oppose any movement that seeks to divide us on the basis of race and ethnicity and religion, which is what the alt -right mm -hmm. right movement is about. Uh, we are facing a challenge. And if we don't deal with that challenge uh, through social media, the internet, mm -hmm. uh, through our politics, uh, et cetera, then we'll go back, I think, to the 1920s and 30s in terms of race relations. Do you believe, Dr. Baldwin, that this is the most serious threat that we've had against American democracy since emancipation? Exactly. I think this is the most serious threat. I think the most serious threat to our uh, existence as a nation uh, is internal. Mm -hmm. We talk a lot about ISIS and uh, the external threat, threats with uh, Islamic terrorism, and that is a threat. Mm -hmm. But I think the greatest threat to our survival of, of an, as a nation is internal. Mm -hmm. And it results from the alternative right and from the more radical 
right-wing conservative extremist movements that are against uh, diversity, that are uh, promoting white supremacy, uh, xenophobia, uh, anti-Semitism, I think that's our greatest threat. Uh, nations, great civilizations are often destroyed from within, mm -hmm. not from without. So we have to be concerned about what's going on mm -hmm. in our society. And, 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 and while realizing also that there are external threats. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and so in a real sense, we've never had to uh, really face anything uh, like this alternative right, and especially its ability to sort of move into the regular political organizations, exactly. the regular political parties. Uh, all the other times, these were generally third party movements and et cetera, and et cetera. Uh, fringe but movement. The fringe movement. Yeah. This movement has somehow climbed into, uh, it, well, into the political process and it, it sort of considers itself <laughs> one, of the, uh, one of the two major political parties. Exactly. Was, it, it appears to me. Not only the political processes, but as I said earlier, law enforcement, criminal justice system, uh, we see the penetration of this alt-right movement all, at all levels. And if we're not careful, uh, we will destroy ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, forget about, uh, not forget about it, but we have to understand mm -hmm. that the greatest threat to our survival and welfare as a nation mm -hmm. may not be ISIS, may mm -hmm. not be external terrorism. Mm -hmm. It might be the kind of domestic terrorism mm -hmm and the kind of extremism that exists within our own mm -hmm. nation. And, and that's becoming more and more apparent. Exactly. And sometimes some of the things that you would have thought would never be possible yeah. prior to the last to the last year and a half yeah. uh, now seems to be uh, something that could possibly happen exactly. unless w we are resolute in terms of how we try to, exactly. what, what should we do now? In terms I, of I do think that we need to take seriously what politicians like Hillary Clinton are telling us about the alt-right. Alt -right. We need to also appeal to the white community uh, to become more conscious of what's going on and to use the resources of that community to counter what's going on. See, uh, people of color cannot deal with that issue alone. Mm -hmm. You have African Americans, you have Latino Americans, you have Asian Americans, and all are potentially targets of the alt-right mm -hmm. because they are against diversity. Mm -hmm. They are against multiculturalism. And what we have to do is to call all Americans to the task mm -hmm of speaking out against any form of intolerance and bigotry, which is what the alt-right movement is about. Uh, we should speak out against the restoration of any kind of white supremacist mm -hmm. doctrine or white supremacist practices. And I think we all have a responsibility, a moral responsibility mm -hmm. in that regard. And, and, and I think our greatest challenge is to get the white communities of this country mm -hmm to understand that uh, this alt-right movement poses a threat to mm -hmm. American democracy. D uh -huh. And that they too have a role in terms of, of undermining that movement and virtually, mm -hmm. uh, in, in the end, uh, eliminating and, it and, from And for those who might uh, assume that this movement is only anti-immigrant and anti-black and et cetera, have to recognize that if they come into force, that it's going to be anti-white. And it's anti-American. Uh, for those who believe in it. It's, it's yes, anti-American because our values really, uh, constitutionally speaking, mm -hmm. has to do with what? Freedom, justice, and the pursuit of happiness mm -hmm. for all people. Mm -hmm. And you can't have that with a movement that preaches white supremacy, that embraces not nativism and xenophobia, mm -hmm. white nationalism that calls for a white homeland. Mm -hmm. We can't have a diverse society that gets along uh, in harmony, uh, that advances its welfare if we're going to allow a movements like that to survive mm -hmm. and to sustain themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, Dr. Baldwin, uh, I guess the strange thing about it is that uh, when I first heard of this movement, I sort of thought of it as a fringe movement. Mm -hmm. But now this movement is really becoming one of the most important movements uh, in American society. It's becoming major. And it has regular, or almost regularly captured the, uh, one of the political parties, one of the yeah. great political parties of this yeah. time. It's only that far. And not, from because, capture, of, not because of the moderate Republicans, because mm -hmm. people like George W. Bush and his father, mm -hmm. George H. W. Bush and Jeb Bush and others, 
who are moderate Republicans who but, are legitimate conservatives. But they recognize the But they recognize right. that what's happening here mm -hmm. is a mind mindset mm -hmm. of extreme right-wing Republican conservatism. Mm -hmm. And even they reject that mm -hmm. because they understand that it has a lot to offer in terms of dividing our country mm -hmm. rather than bringing us together. Very good. And, and Dr. Baldwin, let me thank you for bringing by that information. And let mm -hmm. me encourage our audience to tune in again next week for another informative edition of Comments. Thank you and good morning. Mm -hmm.